trust would be level, but you wouldn't be burning the person underneath you. Right? Well, that's what that's what this is for. I'll, I'll go over oh, this in a second. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we'll get started here. Uh, my name is Jeff Dillon. I'm a technical support engineer with Couchbase. And I also have an aerospace company called Pure Rockets. And Couchbase is actually sponsoring my company. So kudos and thanks to uh, Couchbase for uh, supporting me and believing in my project. Um, as you can see, I've got some drones here. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. It's been uh, a great afternoon. Um, thank you, everybody, for sticking through the day today. This is the last session. So uh, hopefully we'll get through this quick and get you out of here. Um, should be fun. Should be a lot of fun. So I've been building drones for a few years. You can see uh, a few drones that I have here. Um, this is where I'm headed with it. It's, uh, this is a scale model of uh, what I plan to uh, eventually build. Um, the, the, the goal here is actually human lifting, uh, human rescue, like a Coast Guard rescue helicopter, for example. Um, also carrying, uh, for example, heavy equipment into a firefighting situation. I envision this being able to carry a 200-pound uh, liquid nitrogen bomb and deliver it into a structure fire and put out the fire in seconds, for example. Um, I'm actually building a, an Iron Man suit out of carbon fiber, heads-up display. Um, as you can see here, the way this works is it's uh, turbines around the outside and a big turbine right in the center. And then this here deflects the exhaust to keep the pilot safe. So that's how that works. Um, I'm not going to be actually flying the turbine drone today. It's uh, still under construction. I haven't flown it yet. Um, it's getting close, though. But even if it were flying, I wouldn't be able to start it up here. It would likely break these windows. It's incredibly loud. That's one of the drawbacks. Um, and also, flight time is, is very short. This particular prototype has a flight time of about two minutes and should be able to hit about Mach 0.5, about 350 miles an hour. Um, that's with no payload. Um, I'm planning to, um, in addition to the turbines, so the way this works here, let me, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here a bit since I got started. I'll go ahead and pull it out of its uh, docking bay here. So as you can see here, It's got the exhaust deflector on the bottom. And that, this serves this purpose here to deflect the exhaust. And then you see the, the connection there where you hook up the cable. And then the cable would hook into a harness that I'd be wearing on my back. This actually burns jet fuel. And a lot of it. <laughs> so the fuel tanks are in the round struts. I know it's kind of hard to see in the back. But these three round struts contain the, the fuel tanks. And so there's three outboard jet turbines and a center jet turbine. And they're there to provide the majority of the thrust. And then. I have these three electric fans on the outside for steering and control. So that's how that works. So I've been having fun with this project, as you can tell. It's uh, been a labor of love. So uh, what I want to talk about today, it's been a great, uh, great afternoon um, question. No, see, the exhaust is diverted out. Yeah. What's that? No. 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 Even that little one does the trick. So you can see this angle. You have a cone, cone of safety right underneath there, and it works. I've tested that. So. But yeah, I mean, um, the pilot would be in a world of smoke right here. You're right. So, yes, that's true. You know, um, there would be. So you you have a helmet on, and you're breathing air. You have a, an air tank, right? And you have a heads-up display, and what you actually see, you know, 
um, you wouldn't see all the smoke around you. There's actually a camera up here, and so what you see is what the camera sees, just blue sky. And so it keeps the, the person that you're rescuing nice and calm. So. so what I'd like to talk today, though, is about capturing drone telemetry with Couchbase Mobile. So as was talked about in the last presentation, um, there's a need for, uh, to get data from these uh, Internet of Things devices, including drones, uh, into a central location for subsequent analysis. So that's what uh, the, the goal of this project is. And some of the data that you might want to capture from a drone, of course, would be GPS information, um, the altitude, compass heading, acceleration, and so forth. And so um, what I'm doing here is I have a, uh, an Arduino device that's writing piggyback on the back of the drone. Here it is right here. And it's connected through uh, a Wi-Fi network that's going to then talk to, uh, through Sync Gateway uh, to Couchbase Mobile and finally to Couchbase Server. So here's kind of the architecture. Um, what the, the electronics that you generally would find on a drone, um, in this case, the sensor controller you see on the left, which is capturing the data that I mentioned, then the flight controller that actually does the flying. And then um, I'm also, um, I have a, uh, to demonstrate Couchbase Lite, I'm, I also have an Android device that also just for the demonstration purposes here, is going to just sit on the back of the drone. High-tech Velcro. So currently, the way they capture telemetry data is uh, uh, these devices have an SD card locally, and so it's just logging to a CSV file, for example. Um, they do have some uh, techniques where you can use radio or Wi-Fi. Um, the disadvantage is, you know, they're, it's only online within range, and when you get out of range, the data is lost if you're, unless you're logging it. So there's really no good offline plus off, uh, online story, and that's where uh, Couchbase Mobile comes in. So with Couchbase Mobile, you have local storage when offline, and then it syncs automatically within uh, Wi-Fi range. And I'm using Wi-Fi here just for demonstration purposes. But in the field, most likely, you'd probably use radio. So Sync Gateway, of course, right now just uses um, you know, TCP and, and uh, over, the, over the internet. Um, it could certainly be uh, adopted to use uh, other uh, communication technologies. Uh, so something you might want to use this for is uh, to provide full positional history for drone flight auditing. Um, you've probably heard that. Uh, Amazon is thinking about delivering packages with, uh, with drones. How many people think that they're ever going to do that? A few? Yeah, I would not raise my hand either. I just don't see how a drone is safely going to deliver packages without, uh, how should I say this, uh, maybe teenagers trying to grab the drone or whatever, whatever they, you know, issues you might come up with. It'd be really tempting. But assuming it does work, and they do get it to work, I'm sure there's going to be regulations where Amazon's going to be asked, OK, where did your drone go today? And uh, so using this logging technique, we could certainly do that. Here is a. Uh, a 3D positional histogram of some drone flights. You can see it, the blue line show goes up to altitude. And it looks like, with the green lines here, looks like it made a few deliveries, possibly. And so this is the project I've been working on, kind of a little self-promotion here. So as I mentioned, um, the goal of this is uh, Human rescue um, to actually, it has, it'll have enough, not this particular model that I have over here, but the, the next version that I'm building in my shop. Um, 
will have uh, enough thrust to actually pick up a person. And so the way that would work, the, the person that you're picking up could either be the pilot or uh, a person you're rescuing. So if, it's, if you're rescuing somebody, of course, it would be flown remotely. Um, and if you're the pilot and you're flying it yourself, of course, you couldn't sit there with a radio-controlled joystick to, to fly the thing that's yanking you up in the air. And so what I've implemented is uh, gesture control, and it's working. So, you know, this, this is takeoff, this is landing, and uh, so there's a, a camera that is watching my, my motions and uh, does ge gesture recognition. So that's how uh, you would actually fly this if you were the, if you were the pilot. Um, The question is, what, what happens when you panic and you go like this? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know I, I'll have to train it to, uh, to recognize, uh, let's land real quick, or get me out of here, or this isn't working, or I'm just really scared. Um, and uh, it, the, the pilot also wears, well, me. I'll be wearing a parachute. And uh, so just in case anything does go wrong. Um, Long-term goal is uh, there at the bottom, uh, orbital reentry, catch and retrieve. So I envision this uh, being able to catch a small vehicle that's coming in for reentry, like a CubeSat or something that's coming in really fast, coming in hot. Um, I suspect I'll be able to get to about twice the speed of sound with my next design. So if they can, if they can slow a reentry vehicle to uh, Mach 2, I could catch it and bring it home. So. That's, that's my goal, and I see a lot of smiles in the audience. So, hey, it's okay, you gotta dream big, right? You know, hey, what the heck? I'm sure Elon you know, had his skeptics at, at the beginning. Better yeah, better, <laughs> better me than you, is that what he says? Yeah, okay. I'm having fun with this, actually, as you can tell. So, uh, what I have here uh, on the device that I have piggyback on the, the smaller drone, uh, it's a Parrot AR drone, nice and safe, styrofoam, low energy. Um, I have this uh, Arduino-style sensor controller. And the way it works, and in this part of the demo, I'm not actually using uh, Couchbase Mobile. What I'm using, th this device here is 10 times a second, it's broadcasting its sensor data and broadcasting over UDP. And then on the PC, I have a UDP listener that's listening on that particular port. And whenever it receives a message, it then writes it to Couchbase server. So Couchbase server is running on this same, same laptop. The listener um, is written in uh, Node.js. And it's uh, basically you know, kind of a poor man's uh, sync gateway. And it's running on the PC. And this is the full source code for it. And that's, that's all I needed to do. Um, I'm uh, new to Node.js, and I have to admit, it's pretty cool. It's really easy to program, and it's you know, platform independent. And uh, it's a, as you can see, I mean, I've, I've created a, a server listener and a couch-based connector, all with, what, I don't know, 15 lines of code, so. Uh, we, uh, Mike Bluestein earlier talked about Xamarin. Personally, I think Xamarin is awesome. I'm uh, um, originally from Microsoft, so I have a dot, I have .NET uh, background, and so uh, using Xamarin was a great fit for me. So I, the second part of the demo is where I uh, piggyback the phone on the drone, and it is actually running Couchbase Lite, and the way it works is it logs uh, compass data that the phone is capturing, and within, when it's within Wi-Fi range, it'll log it to Couchbase server on my PC here. When it's out of Wi-Fi range, it'll log locally, and then when it drops back down into Wi-Fi range, it'll sync. And this is where, you know, this is just for demo purposes. You know, in the field, you'd probably use a radio technology instead of, instead of Wi-Fi. Uh, last year at Connect, I did a, a, a helium balloon demo a uh, video that if you were there, you might have seen it, where I had a tethered balloon with this same uh, mobile device. 
and I showed it uh, syncing to Couchbase server. And as I let the balloon up in the air, it got up to about 200 feet and out of Wi-Fi range. It started uh, logging locally. And then as I pulled it back down, uh, it got back within uh, Wi-Fi range and it synced up the, the data from uh, that, that balloon launch. And I was gonna try to fly a balloon here for demonstration purposes, but we're in a, uh, a flight path right here. You've probably heard some planes flying over and so F the FAA said no, no balloons, so. And they also, and security said, uh, I can't fly that, that big drone. I actually was here yesterday talking to security because I knew there was gonna be issues and sure enough, you know, they, they, you know, they said, what is that thing? You can't bring it in here. So I had to bring a, a note from home to. <laughs> but they did let me bring it in finally. So the demo, let's see if this is gonna work. So this is an AR drone, um, commercially available. It's about 300 bucks. It's a really good learning drone if anybody's interested in getting into this, uh, this hobby. And the way this works is uh, once it starts up, I put in the battery and assemble the protector case here. It, uh, it broadcasts a Wi-Fi access point, an SSID, and then I can connect using my iPhone. I connect to that. Let me do that real quick. And so you don't even need uh, like a radio control setup. You just use your phone to fly this thing. It's pretty cool. So when I'm going into my Wi-Fi settings, I see AR Drone 2, 004. I'll connect to that. And uh, once that's done, it's ready to go. So I'll go ahead and start out with, uh, this actually is uh, called a WASP mode. It's a kind of industrial style Arduino made by a company in Italy called Libellium. So I'll do that one first. And this one, I'm gonna start up my UDP listener See if that's going to be able to show on the screen here. There we go. So hopefully this will work. So I'm going to start it. So the UDP, UDP listener, it's uh, running on uh, port 3.3, uh, three, three, et cetera. And then this device nope. It might help if I uh, started Couchbase on my laptop here. <laughs> so let me do that real quick. Okay, so we have Couchbase running. And let's try that again. So far, so good. Took a few seconds last time, didn't it? So we'll see. Now, if I just move this a little bit, it should. <laughs> Never fails. Demo blues. Sure, couch space is up and going. Seems to be. Cannot perform operations on a shutdown bucket. It should be running now. <laughs> I will. There we go. 
Okay, you can see some data coming in. So the way this works, it uh, detects acceleration and it only, it only writes if something's changed. So if it's sitting there still, it's not gonna log anything. So um, even as I move this, you're gonna see it start logging. So it's, it's flying. No, I'll really start it up here. So you people in the front, you're, you're okay with this? Okay, all right. Yeah, if it starts going that way, just run, all right. Did you hear what happened to Enrique Iglesias yeah. last week? He was on stage singing and they had a drone that was uh, filming him. And he reached up to say hello to it and he put his fingers up into the propellers and uh, he had to have surgery. You don't, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So these things can be dangerous. You need to be careful. So here goes. So you just steer it by tipping your phone. It senses the tip of the phone. That's how you steer that thing. So that's it. It worked. So. so you can see that it was logging that, that data. And if we go into uh, Couchbase, the admin console, you'll be able to see that activity. Kind of hard to see. Anyway, it's going to scroll off to the end. But anyway, you can see that it's actually being written to, uh, to Couchbase. So it worked. So uh, that's really all I had. It's kind of a short, uh, short talk. I can talk a little bit more about the drone project and everything, but uh, yeah, it's, go okay, <laughs> go ahead, all right. So let me grab this thing. This weighs about 30 pounds. And each of these turbines, uh, they run about 2,500 bucks a piece. So I've got a few bucks invested in here. But um, they, the red turbines, uh, the big, the jet turbines, they each produce about 25 pounds of thrust a piece. And so, um, and then the, there's one in the center, and it produces 15 pounds of thrust. And then these uh, smaller electric turbines produce five pounds of thrust a piece. So total thrust on this is about 100 pounds, and the total weight's about 30 pounds. So you should be able to easily pick up 50 pounds, for example. Um, the, like I said, the fuel tanks are in these round uh, struts right here, and there's enough fuel in this to probably last about two minutes, which is you know, obviously quite short duration. The, um, these electric turbines ultimately will rotate and pivot, and that's what will give you the, the yaw control to go that way, the twisting. And then pitch and roll will be provided by the, the, um, the central turbines. The um, final design that I'm working on, um, it's in my shop right now, is going to have a center turbine. Um, it's about a foot in diameter and about two feet long, and uh, they're pretty pricey. And it'll have about 250 pounds of thrust. And so it's gonna look, the, the scale, that's pretty much the scale. That's pretty much what it's gonna look like when it's completed. And uh, so, uh, making progress. And what kind of uh, uh, parts or kind of uh, systems will you 
I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, oh, so the question is. So a valid question, um, he had asked what would happen if one of those turbines fails? Um, not necessarily. So the ultimate goal, is, you notice that it currently has the three electric turbines on the outside. Um, they're this, there temporarily while uh, the aircraft learns how to fly and I learn how to develop this technique, this technology. Um, eventually it's going to be all turbines, six turbines around the outside and one in the center. And the reason I chose six turbines instead of four is for redundancy. If one turbine fails, you can still control it and land it. It's a, sp a flat spiral. It rotates around the failed turbine, and so it'll spiral down and come in for a controlled landing. That's the plan, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any one of the uh, turbines fail, then automatically it starts moving. It's not going to, if you disconnect, then what you're saying is true. If it fails at a given time in any moment. No, if you, just, if you just shut one down instantly, it'll, de it, it'll detect it within a thousandth of a second yeah. and put it into a flat spin and come in for a landing. So the, the control is done uh, in, the, in the airplane? Yes, it has an onboard flight controller. It would detect um, one of the turbines is. Uh, not working and go into uh, a, a rescue mode and come in for a, a flat landing. If one of them goes bad, why don't you turn off the other one on the opposite side? Then it would fall quickly. Yeah. <laughs> not a good scenario. So if you have five outboard <laughs> turbines still working, you can still control it and land, but it'll be slowly spinning and it'll rotate around the failed turbine. Yeah, that's how the physics works on that. So the question is, do I account for strong winds? Um, if this thing is traveling 350 miles an hour, wind is not going to have much effect. Um, however, the main goal of this is hover flight. But again, this has so much power that it could actually uh, compensate for, for wind conditions. Certifica uh, certification, a, a great question. When I get to this point, I'm going to register this as an experimental Aircraft. Precipitation. Oh, precipitation. Yeah, rain. rain. Or I see. Or, you know, dust. Lightning. <laughs> Lightning. Well, have you ever flown in a jet airplane? No, I don't have a jet airplane like, <coughs> like you have. No, I mean just in a, in a jet plane, like that fly, fly overhead. Yeah. yeah, if you've ever traveled, you've flown in a jet plane. They use the same type of jet turbines. They suck in water and geese and things all, all the time. <laughs> So, so this would do the same thing. I mean, if water were to get in there, I doubt that it would stall the engines. So. Mm -hmm. Right. So the question is. Um, in the real world, data is coming in a lot quicker. Uh, I'm currently logging 10 times a second, which you're, you're right, um, would, would not necessarily be fast enough to compensate, especially at, at speeds of half the speed of sound. So fly-by-wire requires um, adjustments several, several thousand times a second. So that's uh, a big uh, part of my project is to increase that throughput to, uh, to get that level of performance. Um, the dimensions of the final one, uh, it's, that's at like about a three foot wingspan. The final version here, um, this is pretty much to scale, a six foot wingspan, about the size of this table. And uh, so if anybody has, a, a, has uh, $50,000 lying around for a jet turbine that I need for the center, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> Paul Allen, Dr. Paul Allen. Paul Allen, yeah. I see. So. 
Yeah, I've, I've put up all my own money for this one. I'm, you know, I have no retirement left. Yeah. Oh, what I was going to say. So anyway, um, I, I misunderstood your question about precipitation. I was talking about certification. Yeah. So uh, I'm actually going to register this as a uh, experimental aircraft. I'm a pilot, and so I be able to fly this personally um, under uh, uh, experimental aircraft laws. Well, really? <laughs> the question was, do you need insurance? And I'm like, nah, who needs insurance? Yeah, these are, you know, these are questions that I, like, ignore. I'm just working on the technology right now. They're valid. Um, I just want to get this working. And uh, personally, I don't see how they'd catch me. You know, so I don't, you know, kind of like base jumping, you just do it. And then you just run away. Yeah. Yeah, true. Since Couchbase is sponsoring me, I can't do anything illegal. You know, they would, they would kind of frown on that. So, yeah, good, good points. <laughs> the question is, are there any good guys or bad guys that have been contacting me? Um, not yet. Um, but uh, I'm working with a, a group of people, some uh, engineers down in Hollister, and we're actually building... Um, uh, a rocket, a, a three-stage hybrid rocket, um, is actually going to be the first hybrid rocket to make it to orbit, and it's going to be built by amateurs, no less, and it should be flying in about two years. And uh, we had some uh, people uh, from uh, Korea come and talk to us, and uh, they didn't, they 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 declined to say if they were from North or South Korea, <laughs> and so we didn't go into too much detail. We just we had a nice lunch, and they let, you know they went on their way, and so not sure how. <laughs> but yeah. Any other questions? Where are you located? I'm. Uh, my name's Jeff Dillon. Um, the um, I'm I'm located in Alameda. That's where you do work. Yeah, and I actually have a, a hangar at Hayward Air Airport. So I have about a 1,000 square foot hangar that's just perfect for what I'm doing. And I can uh, light up these turbines and it doesn't bother anybody. Are you doing any um, aerodynamic, aerodynamic simulation tests? A lot. I've been working with uh, Penn State University on the physics and the math. They're, they've been doing some work on uh, pendulum dynamics um, when tethered underneath a, a drone. And so I'm working with them for the, the math and, and the physics. And I've been modeling it in uh, Simulink, MATLAB. MATLAB, okay. Yeah, MATLAB is my uh, platform for that. Other question? A wind tunnel. The question is, you know, could I use a wind tunnel? Absolutely. Um, I could use it. Um, is the wind tunnel at Ames still operational? I think it is. Yeah, so I have some friends at Ames, actually, some friends in NASA that are kind of backing me, too. So I, if I need, once I get there, first thing, I just need to get this thing flying and then, you know, go from there. Yeah, um, no, I'm just uh, building it and kind of hoping that it'll fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, not, not a lot of uh, theoretical testing. It's just build it and see what happens. But I have to admit, I've been testing this, and there's some uh, videos on YouTube. If you go to my website, purerockets.com, there's a link to a bunch of YouTube videos where I've flight tested the previous prototype that just had one center turbine and, I, and then uh, three propellers around the outside. And uh, I had, like, handlebars on it. And I was able to fly that thing with one hand. It was, it was incredibly stable. So I'm very confident this is going to work just like I hope what it will. What about the precision of the, uh, of the support system? How pre precise does it have to be because of the you know, motion that's fast enough, any vibrations, et cetera? Well, the, the, the question is how do I handle um, disturbances and, and handle changes in the environment? Just How like about the environment? By itself, they, they, it, it could vibrate. Mm -hmm. Right. I haven't got that far yet. Uh, so my, my last prototype had one turbine in the center, and it worked just fine, flew wonderfully. I flew it around inside my, my hangar, 
It was incredibly loud. I, this, these are the loudest things I've ever heard in my life. And this thing has four of them, so it's, uh, there's going to be some vibration, and uh, so it remains to be seen how it's going to behave. Have you actually run the engine yet? I have not. I just, I just got this constructed like a week ago getting ready for this. Yeah, so the, the center green turbine is the turbine that I borrowed from the last prototype, and it, I did uh, start that up. And it, Wing it? I'm just going to wing it. Uh, the question was, am I worried about vibration? Um, uh, am I worried? No. Um, could it happen? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I'm not quite sure how it's all. So I don't have an engineering background. I'm uh, from the maker movement would be my, probably my biggest claim to fame. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, then you can do whatever you want, you know. Well, and Yeah. Yeah, so vibration could definitely be, be a problem, especially when I have four jet turbines mounted vertically. See, nobody's ever done this before, so I'm like kind of on new ground here. So. What about the material? Is it carbon fiber? Well, this particular drone is made out of aluminum. Uh, the suit that I'm wearing is going to be made out of carbon fiber. But that also needs to be powerful. It could be, yeah. And, and if you look closely at the construction, you can see that I use a lot of nuts and bolts. And that's not good, because whenever, whenever, whenever you have vibration, they unscrew themselves. Yeah, so I just need some Loctite on it. So if anybody has some, if anybody has some Loctite on them, I, I could use some right now before I fly it. One more question. <laughs> the question is, what inspired me, and what does my family think about it? So I'm single. So, um, and uh, what inspired me is uh, you, you might be able to guess from, from this little guy right here. The, the movie Iron Man was one of my inspirations. Basically, Hollywood movies inspired me. The, the Rocketeer. Um, oh, has anybody seen the movie Astronaut Farmer? One person. Okay. It's the story of uh, Billy Bob Thornton is this uh, uh, farmer. It's a fictional story. Uh, uh, with an engineering background, but he's currently a farmer, and he builds a rocket in his barn, and he approaches uh, the local Dunkin' Donuts for sponsorship and uh, gets some money, and it's a great movie. Um, but, uh, you know, and I'm not one to be critical of movies like that, but there's no way uh, a single-stage liquid fuel rocket with <laughs> current technology would ever make it to orbit. But, hey, you know, you got to just kind of go with the... Go with the movie, you know. And I'm not going to say what happens at the end, but the, the title of the movie kind of gives away, Astronaut Farmer. You know, it's like, but, uh, so movies was my inspiration, basically. And I've been, uh, I've been a hang glider pilot since I was a teenager, and I've uh, been a thrill seeker basically ever since. Uh, hang gliding, windsurfing, kite surfing, you know, those, those types of things. Do you have a daredevil certification? Pardon me? I, I still didn't understand. Daredevil certification. Oh, daredevil certification. No, I don't. You know, I mean, what's that show, uh, um, Big Bang Theory? It's like I, it's Sheldon, and they ask him, are you crazy? And he goes, no, my mother had me checked. So I don't think I'm crazy. But um, anyway, I digress. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, um, it's not going to be, there, there won't be any payload. Uh, uh, there won't be anybody on board to achieve that speed that would have to be without a payload. And so it would have some sort of um, mechanism to retrieve a fast moving object. Do you, do you have some ideas how I might do that? I, like a, a net or something? I, <laughs> I, I haven't really thought that. No, I have some ideas. I'm, I'm joking, of course, but um, yeah, um, a big magnet. I'm joking, of course. Um, the, the final details uh, uh, are still being uh, fleshed out, so. Mm -hmm. But where, where, there's, where there's a will, darn it, there's a way. 
you know, I'll yeah. figure it out. I for a long time with bigger objects, yeah. with bigger planes, and then during the Cold War, they were projecting goals of film out of satellites and yeah. catching them with airplanes. Exactly. Yeah, so the, the gentleman was mentioning that in World War II, uh, satellites would drop their rolls of film down and then be caught by, by airplanes, so. Yeah, so it, it's possible. And ultimately, um, my goal is to do this on Mars, of course, you know, so I'm gonna be uh, contacting Elon. He's my new best friend. He just doesn't know it yet, so. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry? You could probably, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll probably get somebody knocking on my door one of these days, but yeah. You know, if there, there are some videos, um, I, and I wish I would have had time to show it, where uh, this uh, university back east had a drone demonstration where they had two drones um, that were playing catch. And they had this one where it was balancing like a, a stick and another one where um, they, 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 tossing. They, tossed, they tossed a ball up in the air and the drone would come over and catch it. And they actually, there's three drones and they had a net and it would catch, catch the ball. But they're not controlled remotely, they operate as Right, and they were not controlled remotely, it was all autonomous. They had, you know, built-in uh, intelligence to be able to. Swarms of, swarms of rob, uh, mm -hmm. robots. Right, swarms of robots. So you can imagine swarms of these turbines. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, it'd be, a, it'd be a scary sight. So, you know, I don't want to hint about any military application because that's not what I want to do, but I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, great. Okay, thank you.